Heather, a fan of the channel, sent me a message in a bit of a panic saying that after all the costs and plane tickets for Alaska, she had no money left for shore excursions and wanted to know how can we make the most of our port stops when we can't afford any excursions or activities. Now, I loved this challenge because for my cruises there, I believe I have incredible things to do in each port that are either totally free or cost just a couple of dollars. I was so excited, I even created an Alaska Ports on a Budget download with maps and reminders for Heather to use. And you can download that too, more on that later. But here's what I told her to do in every single port, starting with fantastic things to do in Skagway without breaking the bank. Skagway is a charming historic town. It's got many old buildings and the ship's dock, literally a very short walk away. It exploded, it grew really dramatically during the 1890s Yukon Gold Rush because it was the gateway to the quickest way to get there over the White Pass behind the town. This is though a town really worth exploring, but while wandering around by themselves would be enjoyable, they will miss many hidden gems like I did the first time I went there not being prepared. So I recommend that they do something very simple. They use the free Skagway Convention and Visitors Bureau map. It gives a great but very short history of each building and they all have quite a story behind them. Some of the places I loved in the town and encouraged her to spend some time in include the White Pass and Yukon Railroad depot where you can see the trains depart and arrive. It's also where the National Park Service is and they have a free gold museum. Across the way from that is the Red Onion Saloon, which was a brothel. It has a free museum now upstairs. Further into town is the McCabe College building with the Skagway Museum, which is really interesting. But what most people don't do, but I really recommended Heather and her group did, is at the top end of the town, is to keep going and walking out to the Gold Rush Cemetery and then onto the Lower Reed Falls. It really is a must see. Now, while the map can be collected from the Visitor Bureau Office in the rather interesting Driftwood Covered Arctic Brotherhood Hall, it's also like others I mentioned in that download that I created. If self-exploring with a map did not appeal to Heather, I would then suggested perhaps go on the free National Park Service Gold Rush Skagway Historic District walking tour. It's a bit of a name there. They depart from the office that I mentioned earlier. They're 45 minutes long. They depart at 9 a.m., 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. Another great no-cost option are the various scenic walks, which there also is a map for. But the best in my view is the Yakutania Point, which takes about an hour. It's a round trip of about one and a half miles from just where the ships dock. There are great views of the ships, the water, the mountains. Now, Heather will be actually be there early in the season, but if she was there sort of July to September time, I then would have encouraged a scenic walk to the Pullen Creek stream, just on the outskirts of town. It's a must because you get to see the salmon run there. Another port on Heather's travels will be Juneau, and I have some amazing low-cost things to do here, including what I think will be one of the most memorable activities that they do across the entire trip. Juneau has been the capital of Alaska since 1906, when it was moved from Sitka, which I will talk about later. It's, a un it's really unique as a capital because there are no roads connecting it to the rest of the state. So everything and everyone must come in and out by boat or by air. It's surrounded by steep mountains with the Juneau ice field with 30 glaciers on top of it. My strong recommendation to Heather was to get out of what I think is a slightly uninspiring town and head to and get up close to the Mendenhall Glacier. It's stunning. The visitor center is really interesting and you can then also get right up to some spectacular falls called the Nugget Falls. You can spend longer at the Mendenhall Glacier and see much more than you are going to do on most of the ship tours as well. And it can be done for very few dollars. The cheapest way to get there is on the local capital transit buses. It'll cost about $3 each way at the time of recording. It's an hour long bus ride and then there's a 30 minute one and a half mile walk from the stop to the visitor center each way. So that's the cheapest way of doing it. So many people though instead use the big blue bus Glacier Express. That's about $45 per person return. It's quicker, about half an hour. It will take them right to the visitor center. The driver does some commentary and explanation on the way. It's easiest to buy tickets at the booth dock site, although you can buy them on sites like Viator Expedia. If you go into the visitor center at Glacier, that does cost $5 but it's got displays and films, but it's free to go on the really well-paved walkways and trails to go and see the glaciers, see salmon runs, do even at sometimes the safe bear viewing. There's no charge for using those. 
but there is a must-do walk to the Nugget Falls. It's just under a mile away, so it'll take about 30 minutes each way. Absolutely stunning. If that didn't appeal or they had time, I also recommended getting up the huge Mount Roberts Mountain for incredible views of the town and the surrounding area. Now, one way is to go up and down on the Gold Belt Mount Roberts Tramway. It's right where the ships dock. Up at the top are some trails, there's some films about the history of the area, there's a local crafts gift shop. But they unfortunately have ramped up the cost from around $30 to a hefty $50 return for a day pass. So instead, to do it slightly cheaper, they could hike up the uh, trail. It's quite steep, it'll take about an hour and a half. But if they spend $15 in the shop, or actually lunch when they're there, or they, you can buy a ticket for the same price, they can then ride the tram down. Walking around the city, even with the map, is in my view much less interesting than Skagway and some of the other ports. So what I did suggest is, if those other suggestions I've got didn't appeal, they could walk up to the Alaska State Capitol building. It's about an eight minute walk from where the ships dock. There are leaflets in the lobby to self-explore. Uh, they can go on the free guided tours as well. Now, in addition to seeing the legislation chamber, it's got an amazing collection of Alaskan art. Just behind this is the Juno Douglas City Museum with exhibits about the local history. That costs about $6 for everyone over 12, but it is worth a visit. Another port on Heather's trip, like for most Alaskan cruises, is Ketchikan. And I do have several great no or handful of dollar things to do here too. Ketchikan bills itself as the salmon capital of the world. It's also the rain capital of Alaska, raining at least 234 days every single year. But it also has the world's largest collection of standing totem poles, around 80 of them at various locations and centers. The ships dock right by the city center, and I have two free or really low cost activities here. One of my favorite things to do in Ketchikan is the Totem Bight State Historical Park. It's an 11 acre park. It has 14 incredible authentic totem poles, a tribal house on the water's edge and great scenery. It costs $5 per person, which includes a guided tour explaining all the totem poles and scenery. It is though 10 miles from downtown Ketchikan. The Silver Line public bus goes there. It takes about half an hour each way, but it does have great scenery and it runs at least every hour. The bus time table is online or you can download it in that little download I've done or you can get it in the visitor center. But also actually, if you use Google Maps, input the park, that will also tell you the bus, where to get it, and the next one coming. On my first visit, I thought Ketchikan was a rather dull town, just full of tourist trap shops, until I used, as in Skagway, the official Ketchikan walking tour map. This is what I recommended to Heather, because there are some real gems when you know where to go. It has 35 sites of note in the map, but in addition to seeing the totem poles dotted around the town, 12 of them, the best place in my view is Creek Street. It's the old red light district. It's got charming wooden houses built over Ketchikan Creek. They're all turned into craft shops, restaurants, and there is Dolly's House Museum that that does have a charge to get in. Late in the season, follow the route to the Ketchikan Creek Falls viewing footbridge, and you can actually see the migrating salmon there. The other stop worth exploring is the Southeast Alaska Discovery Center, which costs $5 for adults to get in, but free for kids. It has displays and films about the area's history. And if you do have kids, the range just runs some really fun activities for kids. I did though encourage Heather, if she could find some budget, to splash out for the Great Alaskan Lumberjack Show during their walk. It's great fun watching the two lumberjack teams compete on several crazy timber chopping challenges. The time of recording though, that is about $37 for adults and $19 for kids. A port on Heather's cruise that fewer Alaska cruisers go to these days is Sitka, but I'm pleased to say I did have some low cost and amazing wildlife things to do here. As I mentioned earlier, Sitka used to be the capital. It declined in importance as whaling and the fur trade waned. Now, unlike all the other ports where the ships dock right at the town, they dock at Sitka Sound Cruise Terminal. That's five miles away. There is a free shuttle getting you in and out of town. The town itself is walkable, it's pretty and it's small, but I recommended instead they head to two wildlife options. Within really easy walking distance is the Alaska Raptor Center, which takes in injured birds of prey from across Alaska, including eagles, hawks, falcons, and owls. And once they're, they are, and they're well, they're released back into the wild. There's about 24 that can't and are there permanently. Now you can see these birds up close 
and you can watch them flying behind a glass barrier. It will though cost them $15 for adults and $6 for six to 12 year olds, but it's fantastic. After the Birds of Prey, I have something even more remarkable that they could then head off and do. This is the Fortress of the Bear. There are groups of bears in three quarter acre habitats, but they will get close as close as 25 feet away to view them from balconies, ground level windows and viewing platforms. It is absolutely amazing seeing the bears. The Fortress of the Bear is five miles from the town center, so it's not walkable really, but there are two low cost ways to get there. One is the Blue Line bus, which goes from town to the Gary Paxton Industrial Park, which then takes, uh, takes about 45 minutes. It's about a four minute walk to the entrance. Or they can go on a shuttle bus that's run by a local company called Sitka Tours. They usually run every day when the ships are in town and that will cost $5. And you can find uh, that shuttle in the parking lot at the Centennial Hall right there in town, easy to find. Entrance to the Fortress of the Bear is about $15 for adults, $5 for eight to 18 year olds. If wildlife did not appeal or they had time, there's also the Sitka National Historical Park. Now this is actually quite an easy walk from downtown. The park is 107 acres, but the collection of 15 totems put there in 1906 in the totem park is the most popular attraction. Now there is a blue line bus stop there. So I told her it's really easy to pop in on the way back from seeing the bears into town. By the way, if you want that download that I mentioned at the start with maps and links to sites and more tips I pulled together for Heather, you can download that uh, on my site at tipsfortravelers.com slash Alaska Ports. Travelers spelled with two L's. But before you do that, Watch this video with my suggestions on the must do things in Alaska if you do have some budget, including probably the most memorable, unique and amazing one I've done anywhere in the world. See you over there.